picture of him about 10 years ago. I look like this. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, so thank you to uh, Michael and Nabola for the opportunity to speak to you today. Um, I'm David Hiscock. I look after uh, the Centre of Excellence, who's actually our engineering teams from uh, UK through to Japan. I look after America's, um, uh, where our headquarters are. Andrew is, uh, should we say, more the meat in the sandwich, and um, he's, uh, no. he's going to be doing the uh, tap dance routine for you in a, in a few moments. Uh, and the brains of the party are actually our sales engineer at the back, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Walt Pitter. Um, no, down. There you go. So ribbon, you may well be known, uh, may be known to you uh, if you are uh, running any sort of hosted hosted uh, telephony, because in most hosted telephony solutions, you need a session border control. Especially for the uh, uh, UK enterprises, uh, we've been uh, in the market for a very long time. If you actually look at our, our, our history, unnervingly, Michael and I do go back <coughs> this far. Yeah. Very, very short back. Oops. That's all right. Uh, it's touch screen, that's the yeah, problem. Um, so, uh, when Nortel, uh, here in the eye, uh, did break up. Um, uh, the carrier voice division got bought by a company called Genband. Uh, Genband merged in 2017 uh, from the carrier side and, and uh, Sonus from the enterprise side merged and became uh, uh, a new name or ribbon. And in the process, we bought a few other companies uh, on the way. Uh, ECI is probably uh, the biggest one uh, where we bought uh, IP Optical uh, Networks, DWDM, uh, a lot of IP technology, and they do dominate a lot of critical infrastructure and military stuff across uh, the world. Bottom line. Bottom line. Little bit of numbers. Who are we? Where are we? Um, so, right across the globe, sub a billion, uh, but about two and a half thousand employees dotted all over the place, about a thousand in RD. A large chunk of those are in India. Um, but an interesting thing for me is. You know, when you talk about an American company, if, if they're a serious international company, they have at least 50% 50, 50 outside North America, and, and we do. It's growing in 2023, uh, especially in Asia Pac. We're doing uh, significant business in Japan, significant business in, uh, uh, in India, and uh, knocking on the door, uh, taking out some market share actually in, uh, in China, uh, which is interesting stuff. Customers. Um, really, I want to highlight the, uh, the little diagram right in the middle. The vast majority of our sales, 72% of our sales, are in service provider. So, what do we do? We transform networks from TDM, various others, to state of the art, latest, latest world, mainly the voice, uh, and then obviously in the uh, uh, IP and optics side for 5G backhaul and various others. If you have to look at the telco brands, <coughs> it literally is a who's who across the planet. So most of the tier ones across the planet have something of ours. Uh, if you go and look at BT will be in there somewhere, you know, we, we transact something like 55, 58% of all the PSDM calls across the UK every single day. So we're in most of the uh, bigger networks in their core backbone. Why is that interesting for you and for this room? Because over in the other side of the uh, uh, market, the enterprises are talking to the carriers in some way or form and resellers in this room, the partners in this room, are putting a lot of that glue together. You're the front that puts <coughs> a lot of these, these packages together. <coughs> and of interest, not really highlighted too much because no one really wants to publicize uh, their security, most of the big cloud players do use Ribbon in their core. So you know, be that a, uh, a Zoom, um, maybe our eight by eight friends, so thank you for that. Uh, Google, Amazon, Apple, uh, but also the contact center uh, vendors. When you move to, to Google, sorry, move to Genesis, Genesis Cloud, all of the SBCs in there are, are ribbon. Again, what is that to you? What that means is compatibility, interoperability. It makes life a lot easier. Uh, we tend to partner with Microsoft. We're not in Microsoft's uh, core cloud, but we work with Microsoft. We're one of two vendors in the IoT labs. There are only two SBC vendors that do all of the IoT, so it's us and one other. But what that actually means is, when they kick the tires on an application going into Azure, it's done on, on our SBC. 
So what I'd like to do is uh, highlight uh, the strength of, uh, of ribbon, but uh, hand over to, uh, to the brains. Mr. Blewett. Thank you very much, David. And you were close to three minutes. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think, I don't want to talk about product because we can talk product all day long and that's what the guys from the boat are all about. What I want to talk about is opportunity. Where you guys can see or identify those opportunities in the markets and certainly where the markets are changing. So the first slide I really put up is, is this is a, a study from Cavell. You all know Cavell. Um, and this company, and see where that, that sort of market is heading. So they're seeing a massive drop off in these traditional PBX vendors. You know, the, the likes of your yeah, yeah, Vios, your Mitos, your NECs, in terms of new solution uptakes. Where they are seeing the growth is obviously around the UCAS and CPAS type providers. So you've got your Microsofts in there, you've got your Ring Central, your Zooms, your APs. <coughs> so you know, you've got the right people in the room. <coughs> so we're, we're seeing the opportunity. But more importantly, is these companies like Zoom, Cisco, and Microsoft are reporting huge numbers. Okay? So let's take a quick look at the market. Again, you know, we, we had an event in Lisbon, uh, and we had Microsoft there, we had Cisco there, and everybody had all sorts of different numbers of where they're, they're sitting. So we, we are reassured these are quite accurate. So let's look at Teams. So we're here to talk about Teams and the opportunity. 280 million daily users use Teams today on a daily basis. Of those 280 million, only 12 million use it for making telephone calls. Blimey, that screams opportunity, does it not? If we look at Zoom, <laughs> 300 million users, of which 5.5 only use it for making phone calls. If we look at the WebEx, 250 plus million daily users, and of those, only 7 million. Now, <clears throat> you as partners here are probably asking yourselves, where's the market heading? Quite clearly, we're going into this kind of UC space. Where's the opportunity? It's right here. Look from a Microsoft perspective. A lot of these Microsoft customers, the enterprises, have bought something called an E5 license, which already has a phone system on it. I spoke to one of the partners earlier on today and said, look, have you asked your customers to use some Microsoft to work with, do they have E5 licensing? He said, well, yes, they probably do have it. It means they're paying for something they don't use, which gives you guys a really easy way to connect them to make phone calls. Blimey. That's surely something. We are in a marketplace today, um, and it's a place of confusion around Newcastle. If our partners are confused, what on earth are our enterprise doing? They're saying, which way should I go? Should I go in page, should I go in central? Where am I going here? It's not a question of just, do I keep with ICN because it's going? Do I move to SIP? It's actually, this is what's confusing the market. <coughs> which Newcastle platform? What we're saying as Ribbon is, it's entirely up to you, Mr. Customer. You can go one way or another. We'll facilitate something that allows you to connect to everything. What does that give you? It makes you really sticky with your customers. So it's, it's really a point as well where you turn around and say, do I resell just you? So maybe they've got Teams, maybe they've got Zoom, there's not much to there. But what if they want to connect to PBX? Or let's just turn around and say, they've got some sort of contact center they want to bring into. Or am I going to go carry a peer? You know, we talk about operator connect. A lot of carriers doing that. They might want to connect that to their PBX on-prem somehow. They might want to connect to contact center. Well, how do you do that? What we're saying is with Ribbon, the opportunity is vast. We're technically the glue in the middle. We stick it all together for you. Okay? We try and make it simple. And it's, it's you know, the, the opportunity with your customers to say, customer, whichever way you decide to go, we can help you. Because I bet your bottom dollar, if they decide to go Zoom from Microsoft Teams, the first person they're going to talk to is you guys. Why? Because you're the guys connecting it all up together. You have made them really sticky. So it's, again, just reiterating, enabling the hybrid migra migration. We talk about the PBX on from, okay? We talk about a lot of, a lot of the partners today are, are um, getting revenue streams from support contracts. It's, it's the money that tides over, it pays, keeps the lights on, etc. And all of a sudden, somebody comes along to your customer and goes, oh, Let's move into Teams. And you think, oh my God, what do I do? I'm going to lose my support revenue. But you know what? You don't have to. Because by sticking an SPC or a gateway in the throws, you can connect up whatever you want to your existing SPC, connect to fax machines, sweat your revenue stream here on your support contracts, move to a new revenue stream. And what you'll actually find is a migration over time from this to this, 
but you have the customer with you. Silence, now, silence. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> what we've tried to do as well, and again, I'm trying very hard not to talk about product, what we've tried, tried to do is change the way that we go to market to make it more appealing to our, our partners. <clears throat> And what does that mean? Historically, we would have sold hardware through a CapEx basis. So you guys come back in the annual support contract. Thank you very much. We moved that hardware into a virtualized solution. Again, CapEx. <coughs> but even pre-COVID, our partner said to us, oh, we're getting asked for consumption type models, as a service. How can we do that? So we created uh, something called an SBC as a service, or fixed based services. So sold on a per channel basis, could be per user, whichever way you want to go, you talk to us. And more importantly, for those customers who turn around and say, Microsoft, Dark Arts, don't know the PowerShell piece, I want somebody to do it for me. We've got complete software as a service. It's got a portal, so it's automated. Bring your own SIP trunk, bring your own Microsoft license, type in the details through this portal, within 10 minutes you're making a phone call. That's a great opportunity for you guys. You can go into your customer service, guess what? I do on Teams in 10 minutes if you want. And I can keep your PBX in there as well if you want. Very, very simple. So what's the opportunity? As a ribbon partner today, we take the carry into our product portfolio, which is vast, and we turn around and say, right, you can connect to whoever you want. You guys can go on the journey, we always talk about this journey with Microsoft, you can go on that journey and say, right, I'm gonna go and sign up as a CSP with Microsoft to earn money from their licenses. Right. You might just turn around and say, customer, you go get the licenses somewhere else. You get the licenses, I'll connect it all up. What's that mean? We've got two. I can then sell my handsets. Okay, we've heard a lot today about handsets and, and headsets and deck phones. Well, if you're selling that, you're starting to sell that. So your sales have to go from here to here. On top of that, I'm going to put additional items. I want the calling. You can buy it outright, Mr. Customer. Or do you know what? You can rent it. It's your call. There are benefits either way. We're seeing a lot more of this. People are telling me. <laughs> a lot more of our customers are turning around so the, the way that we are working today is on a per head per month basis and that's how we expect our, our employees because you know what fantastic we can sell you or say we will provide you the solution on a per channel basis you sell it on a per user basis and guess what you make three times as much money we can talk to you about that we have the workshops about that and, and really it's just we call it the one plus one plus one the UCAS, the SBC, you can keep your, your electricity PBX in play if you want to, add handsets, headsets, room systems, and all of a sudden you see this cell expanding massively. Okay. Now, once you are a ribbon partner and you're on the stream and you're going fantastic, Mr. Customer, you're using Zoom, you're using Teams, you're using Google, whichever way you want to do. And I think the story there is, you know, as a vendor, I hate to use the term agnostic because that's kind of what Microsoft said. I prefer to say we're the popular kid in the playground because we'll work with you, we'll work with you, we'll work with you. And what we'll say is, Mr. Customer, once you're on that journey and you've got your teams, okay, let's look at how else we can create revenue streams for you. The first revenue stream is you've, you've looked at the SBC, so you've got online <coughs> support, okay, on a monthly basis or an annual basis. We've got a solution called RAMP. Okay, Ramp is a management platform, so you can now sell to your customer an enhanced support service. What does that mean? It's customer, I know that problem before you do. I can get proactive, take our normal support, or because I'm managing it through a piece of software, I can now turn around and say I can be alerted before you can. I could do firmware updates remotely, no problems at all. More importantly, I can just get a general look at things like the scoring and how things are going. I can then turn around and say something called analytics. <coughs> A deeper look into that solution across the whole network, taking it apart a level or supplied through Novoa as a service potentially, you could turn around and say, <coughs> okay, I want to see what's calls, quality of calls. <coughs> Interesting enough, just a quick analogy. We had a carrier in the other day into the office and we, we were talking about analytics. We said, look, our enterprises are saying they need this because they want to find out from a problem finding perspective where that issue lies. Is it the carrot? And immediately went, it's never the carrot. <laughs> never the carrot. <laughs> okay. Do you know what? <clears throat> but they want to admit it, so the carrot goes, no, it's not the carrot. It's Microsoft. It's Zoom. Mm. Hang on, it's not them. Oh, it's actually the SBC. Oh, no, it's not, but it's actually the PBS company. 
what happens is your customer starts to get quite frustrated with you, extension starts to come into them and they think, actually, I need to look elsewhere. <coughs> what we're saying is, we can look from the carrier right down to the endpoint. That means we can look into the Microsoft Cloud, we can see if your Teams is working properly, we can look at the SPCs working properly, we can actually tell you what handset you've got on the end of the service as well, and if that's working properly. Why? For one, you've got the carriers, so you understand how they work. The majority of the T1, T2, T3s, I see the ladies from Gamma, they're in your call. Uh, you know, BT, we're in their call. So we, we understand how this works. So we now can give you that reassurance of service. Okay. Out of that, pro step. What a great place to host this for this solution. Why? Fraud detection. Okay. Part of our analytics platform, something called Protect, it literally allows you to sell fraud solutions on top of everything else. So you make money on your handsets, you make money on your headsets, you make money on your works, uh, your, your rooms, your workstations. Now you turn around and enhance support services. You're giving them a, a monthly report on the UC Health. I mean, you've got, there's 50 quid there, there's another 50 quid there, there's another 50 quid there per month. I want you to turn around and say, actually, Mr. Customer, how important is voice security to you? The first thing you think, oh, I've got a firewall. You know what? Firewall's not going to protect you. <coughs> Why? Because when you use UC, you go, I'm a voice call, open up this port, bosh, everything goes out. Uh, and you turn around and say, well, actually, let's look at what the market says about this. And what the market says about this is really, we, we, we commissioned a report that says, you know, the importance of um, uh, voice fraud to your overall security strategy. So you ask a, a data guy, oh, we've got a couple of them. Why? Because it doesn't look at the SBC, it looks at data. We're voice. Okay? As a vendor of voice, we know what a good call looks like and what a bad call looks like. So we asked them, and, and Roughly about 80% said, you know, it is important. What's, what's more important is that there's a switch there coming in there to know what, we'll see what happens. But then we asked the second question, what is your strategy? Do you have a plan? Do you have a plan to fix this? Less than 50%. Gosh, that's some opportunities, isn't it? If I talk to you about voice fraud today, and believe me, Rob and myself go into enterprises, large and small, and we sit down, it's amazing how many people have already been hacked. Whether it's robo calling, bombarding with calls, so you think about contact centre, we've got a very large insurance company. Weekly they, they used to get bombarded by calls. Just malicious people going, actually, well, I'll block their contact. It costs them tens of thousands of pounds a day. Okay. We've got a financial institution in, in America that their executives are getting freak phone calls going, ah, head you head you back then and put the phone down. Okay. Ah, I need to get rid of that somewhere. How do I do that? Okay. More importantly, things like data exfiltration. I'll drop a worm in, I'll collect all the data on your network, make a phone call, out it goes. It can cost your business thousands of inconvenience, stopping, stopping the, uh, the daily use of your, your telephony. So what we're saying is when you start to talk and open up conversation about voice security around whatever you're doing, people step up and listen. It's, it's current, it's of the moment, okay? So I would suggest that. A good, good, um, Picture this now, okay, it's a little bit older, 2021, but this has increased massively. This is <coughs> billions in terms of telephony fraud. You talk to large enterprises, you talk to small enterprises, they're all targets. Okay. Historically, in, in, in the old world, I used to call it DISA. You know, DISA was the way you'd phone in on the line, hit nine, and then make an out outgoing phone call. <laughs> They've got a lot more sophisticated. Why? Because on the data plane, <laughs> the hackers today have thought it's too difficult. Paolo, all the other guys have turned around and said, right, we shut down the collaborate. So what do you get? You get voice because it's, it's white people. I'm putting stuff in the cloud, I'm internet of things, I drop something on there, take it in the office. I've opened everything up. Start those discussions because this is relevant. Your customers today will, will actually sit up, they'll try it, will we'll happily join you with the voter in those meetings and say, look, you know, what's your voice for strategy? Do you have one? What's your journey? Are you looking to do UC cloud somewhere? What's the plan? How are you going to do it? Okay. It's amazing. Okay. Now, when we talk about new revenue stream, we talk about the, the um, benefits to you as partners and how you look at this. So the first thing is we talk about supply of an SPC. What does that mean? That means I can supply my customer as a partner an SPC to connect to whatever UC platform they decide to go down with, or whatever you want to advise them on, more importantly. I can then turn around and say, Mr. Customer, I'm now important to your voice strategy, more important to your journey, because you're controlling me. If they want to change from Zoom, they want to go to the Teams, great. Strange enough, we are seeing multi-UCAS deployments happening now. There's a bit of Zoom, 
There's a bit of Cisco, <coughs> there's a bit of Cisco coming in, and guess what? There's an Avaya PBX somewhere in the plug. We're seeing a lot of that today. So by doing this, you're, you're supplying an SPC. CapEx or ongoing revenue, entirely up to you how you want to provide. What that gives you is an ongoing support revenue stream. Okay, that, that, that device, that piece of software has to be supported. Again, puts you guys front and center in how that works. And we call that the connectivity. We're driving that connectivity. On the other side, once you've got that customer, you can talk about analytics, creating that new revenue stream. We talked about that new revenue stream, which means that you can turn, I'm giving you proactive support services. So, you know, you've expanded or you've gone. The minute you start talking gone, customers say, oh, is that a premium service? Where do I get for that? Well, you're gold service, Mr. Customer. I can give you annual or well, monthly reports or annual reports. I can tell where you see it. I can actually alert anybody if my scores drop, if you know, that quality score drops. So you've now, again, as a partner, showing relevance to your customer. Historically, you'd sit there and go, yeah, I'll take a major support contract every year. I'll go back and see them, maybe buy them a coffee once in a while. And they go, well, actually, well, what am I getting for my support? Become relevant. Become relevant. And the big one that we talk about today is that fraud security. It's, it's of the moment. Everybody, you know, not throwing names out there, but we've got a very large national carrier who quite simply just went, oh yeah, we, we just sell SIP trunks. I mean, we're back with voice for security. Oh, we're really prevalent in fraud. Yeah, yeah, security, etc. Well, who was, oh, we did power. I brought back voice. And once we started talking to them a bit more, they went, oh my God, we are missing the trick here. Went out to some enterprise, and believe you me, they have gone crazy with it. It's really, really quite interesting. <coughs> In fact, the bell's tolling for voice <laughs> <point. You can laughs> <hear it. laughs> So what we're saying is, you know, that drives differentiation. Why? Because you guys need to be current in your conversations with your partners, or with your customers, or whatever. You You'll go in there, and it's not, hey, do you want to talk to PBX? Or oh, actually, I could do a handset with you. Mr. Customer, <coughs> what's your UC what's, what's your, what's your, you know, roadmap for voice? Are you going Teams? Are you going UC? I can help you in whichever way you decide. You now have positioned yourselves as the trusted advisor to your customer. Yeah. Seen some heads nod, seen shock and all, a lot of other people. <laughs> okay. And so we create those new revenue streams. Okay. So where do you look for those opportunities? Do you know what? They're everywhere. Those opportunities are in enterprises, adopting UC, we talk about call centers, we talk about moving to the cloud. You know, virtualization, that's a great one. And again, I'm staying away from product because. I wouldn't have this conversation with guys the <laughs> All of these really are, are the opportunities that you guys can go after. And again, I refer to the case of not going back to Mr. Mr. Enterprise. Hi, yeah, could you talk about closing soon? Mm. No, I've got it. I've got five year lease on this. Oh, okay, that's no problem. Let's talk about how we can get you with that phone system today, maybe into the car very, very easily. All good, but suddenly in, in the trays, we keep that. We'll put this big box in. You can connect your SIP trunks to it. You can connect your UCAS to it. And more importantly, I can protect you with it. So, why partner with Ribbon? Well, we're 100% channel. Okay? Through Enterprise, we do not deal direct. Everything is done through our partner network. Okay? So we will never go direct with partner. There are more unscrupulous vendors out there that will go direct and meet your customer. We never will. Okay? Um, what are we happy to do? Well, we talked about enabling you as partners today to create new revenue streams. We've talked about how you can retain <coughs> revenue streams, retaining those support contracts that you have. Okay. We can talk about diversity. So how do you diversify? Sorry, diversify. How do you diversify? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm same old, same old. I'll keep my Orion clay, I'll keep my Mito clay. Okay, what happens? Some likely lad around the corner is going to come and go, oh, actually, it's all about teams. Just drop that, thank you very much. Unless you're having those conversations today, I bet your bottom dollar somebody's knocking on their door and talking about it already. Just to illustrate on that point, just very, very quickly, and nobody's waving at me, which is great. So just very, very quickly, I'm, 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 we, we were whole coaching around the table, and a gentleman came up and said, actually, um, I'm, I'm really interested to hear. I said, well, why is that? He said, well, I know you do this drop and insert where you simply put an SPC. You don't even have to inform the PBX partner that you're touching it, because what we'll do is emulate exactly the ISDN or SIP coming through straight into that, that PBX, and then off you go. He said, that's exactly what happened to me. I said, well, what's your said, I did the annual, hey, how's it going? Everything's all right. I'm just picking up an annual maintenance contract. And went, I'm glad you came. Can you just get rid of everything? He went, one minute. Somebody had come in and gone, I put the box in here, and I no longer need your PBX. Thank you very much. Goodbye. And he said, that's happening to him more and more. And he's losing revenue from it. So just, just think about this. 
Um, make your customers sticky. That's the whole point. Make your customers sticky. They always need to come back to you. It, it, it is almost like the Wild Wild West. I talk to John as well sometimes, and he said, look, it is a bit like the Wild Wild West. Partners are going after other partners. Oh, I'll, I'll give you 10 pence off this. Do you know what? If you just undercut it, you're driving to the bottom. Add the value. Differentiate somehow. Okay? And, and re really, by doing that, you're keeping those relationships very current. So, quite simply, that's why you need to work with us. We're happy to work with you. If you need our help, guys, we're right here. We're here. We'll support you. We'll drive those businesses. And we're hoping to do some workshops and stuff together a bit deeper. Just watch the space. Yeah, this is very high level. <laughs> so, thank you very much, everybody. That's us. Thank you.